Hello everyone, I just played Anthem, so let's talk about it. If you don't know anything about Anthem, which up until a couple of days ago, no one really did, I'm going to give you guys a crash course of the experience. Anthem is Bioware's and potentially EA's response to the looter shooter genre, although from what I've been able to tell, they started work on this before the looter shooter genre was really starting to emerge again. Anyway, let's get one thing straight. This is not an MMO, but it's still within that shared world shooter genre realm situation. You'll have a hub world called Fort Tarsus, which is unique to you and will not allow other players. But you'll be able to group with your friends in the explorable areas. Max team size is four, similar in vain to how Monster Hunter World works. You know, you're in Astera, you're by yourself, then you can group up into the outside areas with your friends. In Fort Tarsus, you'll be able to do all of your customization, switching guns, this, that. It's your home base. It's your tower. It's your ship. It's your Astera. You know, hopefully I don't need to explain the concept of a home base. You're going to have your base character, which is a pilot, and then you'll have javelins, which are these big suits of armor that you wear right. that do different things and have different stats. Before. They are essentially your class, like you'd find in other RPGs, but I wouldn't exactly call them classes because class implies that you are locked to it forever. You can switch javelins whenever you want. I mean, not in the middle of combat or anything, but you can do one mission as a ranger, and for the next mission, you switch to a Colossus. Or if you get back to your mobile base, known as a Strider, you can switch there too. Each Javelin gets its own progression as well, so you really only need one character. At least that's what it seems like. Weapon-wise, we got to use two weapons, I guess primary and secondary. I got to play with the Colossus doing a mostly short range build, so I had a minigun with 300 bullets per reload and a shotgun. There are also assault rifles, sniper rifles, good blend of things that you'd probably expect from a shooter. You also get two abilities along with an ultimate ability, and these two lesser abilities can be swapped out for other abilities. So for example, in the Colossus that I was using, I had a flamethrower in one hand, and a sort of grenade RPG sort of thing in the other. But the other Colossus that was being played, which was being played by a dev, was using this mortar-like ability instead of my grenade thing, along with a charge cannon kind of looking gun instead of my flamethrower. So you can swap these abilities in and out for different ones depending on how you want to play or maybe the activity that you're going to do. The ranger in the build that we were playing had a freeze grenade, and javelins can combo with other javelins to do just really cool looking stuff and effective stuff as well. It's very, very good to combo with your friends. The Colossus ultimate ability is where you just break out this huge ass cannon from basically out of nowhere. And it gives you, I think, three or four shots that do just insane single and multi-target damage. The big, big blast. The Ranger got this missile lock on thing where you scan an area and then when you're done scanning, you fire like a billion missiles. You also have a melee attack, and you have a defensive this ability right. as well. The Colossus has a big shield as their defensive ability, and the Ranger has a dash move. The melee attack is just a pretty standard melee attack. I don't think there's any specialization on the melee attack, but I could be wrong. To unlock more javelins, so the Storm and the Interceptor, and maybe if there's more that we just don't know about, you'll do the story, otherwise known as the critical path. Flying is a huge part of the game as well. Every javelin can fly. It's mainly how you'll travel through the world. You have a heat meter, and when it fills up, you know, you stop flying, but it regens pretty quickly, and you can fly under waterfalls to cool your jetpack and keep flying, which is pretty nice. Getting a handle on flying is probably gonna be one of the most important things you can do in the game just because it's your main method of travel. Otherwise, the open world explorable zones work as you would imagine an RPG zone might work. You can get crafting materials, you can fight world bosses. There are sub missions to do as well. I'm kind of equating those to 
Destiny patrol beacons, but I'm not exactly sure if that's fair to say since I didn't do any free roam. There will be dungeons, aka strongholds. I'm sure there will be some sort of raid-like activity thrown in there as well. I think they've mentioned that already, but we don't really know anything yet about how those are going to work. Dungeons and raids are not designed to be soloed, but aren't required to complete the critical path. I don't know what can and can't be match made just yet. I think just free roam and missions, you can group up with randoms, but I, I don't even want to talk about it because I just don't know the extent of what you can and can't match make in terms of dungeons and higher level content. I'm not 100% sure yet. This information might be somewhere on the internet somewhere. I just haven't had time to research that specifically. But as we've seen before, this game, much like all of the others of its genre are going to be better played with friends. Friends. Oh, also, there's no PvP at all, at least at launch, and I don't think there will be PvP in the game for a while, if that's what you're hoping for. So if you're looking for Anthem PvP at launch, and that's it, you can, you can pass on this one. As for the story, the official Anthem content that's been coming out is going to do this way more justice than I will, so I'd honestly just go watch that or find some other video, but in short, the world was being built by the gods using these massive devices called shapers, but then the gods were just like, peace, we're out of here, and no one really knows why. The gods didn't say anything, by the way, I'm just being annoying, and shocking to say the least, there are bad people out there who want to control these devices, these randomly activating shaper tools. As for the business side of things, this is a game that is going to be treated as a live service. They want to keep it going for a while, so content updates, DLC, all of that is coming. In terms of microtransactions, they were very clear about having no pay to win ever, and whenever you do buy something, you will know what you are getting. No loot boxes. Things appear to be strictly cosmetic, but Javelin personalization will be able to be earned through some game progression. So that is a, as quick as I can make it, recap of a bunch of things that we learned about the game recently. There's still quite a bit of information out there that I didn't cover in this video that is a bit more specific. I've linked the mega thread of the big Anthem information summary post thing on the Anthem subreddit in the description. There's little bits of info like no trading items and other stuff that I didn't cover. So Anthem, is it Bioware's Destiny? Is it their Warframe? Is it their Monster Hunter? Is it their Division? I've seen comparisons to every single game. From a genre perspective, I can see why. You know, it's a game based around getting loot, but it's not an MMO, and it's a shooter, and then nah, nah, nah. From a gameplay perspective, it mostly felt like its own thing. It's not a Destiny-style game where it's mainly gunplay, and, you know, Destiny's a little bit faster. It's not Warframe, because I think it's a little bit slower than Warframe, and it's not as grandiose with the, you know, the mechs and, and all that kind of stuff, and the combat. It's definitely not Monster Hunter combat, that's for sure. Division might be the closest, but Anthem is definitely bigger in scale with, you know, the flying and the massive explosions and the big robots and the big weapons. It really goes big in that aspect compared to the other games. My first hands-on impressions for the gameplay aspect of the game is mostly positive. I didn't really have too many bad things to say about what I got to play. We played an extended version of the demo that you guys might have seen already if you were watching. Graphically, the game looked phenomenal, but we were also playing on fully kitted PCs, so keep that in mind. I cannot promise that level of fidelity on consoles at all, but on PC, it looked gorgeous. Combat felt pretty good. We did have to play on controllers, so doing things like shooting while jumping or shooting while hovering were a little bit tough, but that's also because I haven't used a controller in a very long time. Flying was not super difficult to learn, although in tight spaces it can be difficult to fly. You just jump, 
and then you hit L3 to start flying. L3 is also sprinting when you're on the ground. And then you hit jump to cancel your flight. Or you can do a melee attack into the ground, which is pretty sweet. Or in my case, you can crash the build of the game that you're playing and have to restart. But, you know, we'll, we'll chalk that up to, hey, it's an E3 build. <laughs> Shooting felt mostly good. The big numbers popping up feels good to see, at least with the kind of player that I am. Although I've seen the criticism that the numbers were a bit too big and they were obstructive and that maybe there should be options to turn off the numbers altogether or maybe they should do health bars. I'm, I'm pretty indifferent to all that. I didn't experience the obstruction too much, but if they did make the text smaller, that's fine. That's, that's also really nitpicky stuff. The only problem I had, which again, I will just chalk up to it being an E3 build situation, was the response time between an enemy receiving fatal damage and then actually dying. It just felt a little bit sluggish, but that's totally fixable, probably. The minigun felt really good to use. The shotgun felt really beefy. Abilities are really impactful, or at least felt like they were. Abilities matter a lot more in this game. They don't have super long cooldowns, and you can combo them. So picking synergistic abilities is going to be really sweet to see in battle. But overall, I don't think the demo you guys saw really did the game justice from a gameplay aspect. The gameplay when I got to play was pretty solid. Whether or not it'll continue to be solid, I can't say at all, nor can I say anything about the investment systems since we saw none of that. We saw nothing about gear, how you're going to progress your character, none of it. So I, I can't even say. However, if Anthem wants to succeed right at launch and not run into the problems that The Division or Destiny had, it needs to have an incredibly polished end game experience. If it does, then I think the game's going to be in pretty good shape, at least based on the very, very thin slice of game that I got to play. I think no PvP is going to really help that because now they don't need to split any focus on balancing the game and they can just make really cool and wacky and powerful guns and abilities and not have to worry about them breaking the game, which in turn lets them make more interesting loot, which in turn might make the end game really solid. So that's what I'm hoping for. So yeah, mostly positive for me, although it's partly also, I can't really find anything bad to say about the gameplay. I don't know if I was completely blown away with what I played, but it was well put together and I had fun blowing stuff up with massive missiles and rockets and shotguns and, and all that. The game comes out next year, February 22nd. So there's still a bit of time to go, still a lot to learn. But so far, I think it's, you know, it's on the right path. I know a lot of people are cautious because it's EA and that's totally fine. I am very cautious as well. I am not much of a Bioware game player, so I also can't say much about the story. I don't think we've really learned a ton, but from what I've learned, they're still committed to trying to deliver a solid story experience as well. I'm more in it for the gameplay stuff, if you couldn't tell. So if you are interested in how they plan on handling the story and all that, I would try to get feedback from someone more involved with Bioware's history and, and all that, and hopefully someone who has uh, some hands-on experience. Anyway, that is your crash course for Anthem and my first gameplay impressions. Thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you next time.